My name is Kaylee Africa. This is Heavy Chef, South Africa's biggest and fastest growing entrepreneur platform designed to stimulate positive change in this country from the ground up, instead of waiting solely for a top-down approach. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have the great privilege of talking to the founder of a company called iExperience, Mr. Aaron Fuchs. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, it's quite a difficult thing to, to sum up what we do, but essentially what, we, what we've noticed is that there's a massive skills gap in the world. If you look at how careers are t changing and how the world is changing, companies are looking for people with a specific skill set, you know, and that's drastically changed in the last 10 years. And universities just have not adapted at the same rate. So, you know, coming from a, a university where I studied mechanical engineering, I noticed that the skills gap was massive. And ultimately what we did was we built a series of programs around the world at, in various strategic cities with growing economies that focused on the skills gap. So teaching skills like artificial intelligence, virtual reality, data science, coding, fintech, and started selling these to American college students as an add-on to their degree to ultimately better prepare them for the future and to give them better career prospects, but also to give them a global perspective. Okay. And so we started that about five years ago and have built this sort of global university to, to almost five cities around the world. Got it. I'm going to take us back to your story because obviously it's key to the bigger picture. Mm. What took you away from South Africa to Yale University? So I think, you know, I enrolled for Mechatronics at UCT and I was super excited, you know, going from high school to, to university. And I think in the first few months, I started to notice like I was just kind of an, a number in this big room, learning things that were not very inspiring to me, you know, going to class from eight till five, studying physics and, um, you know, solid mechanics and doing lots of problem sets. I thought, this is not really how I want to spend my next four years. So I was in one of the computer labs, researching other great universities in the world, just kind of dreaming a little bit, always dreaming big, mm. and um, saw a picture of Yale and I was like, wow, this place looks absolutely incredible. And so I just emailed them and figured out how I can apply, ended up taking a few tests and then submitting an application and ultimately a few months later getting a, a full scholarship to to go to the university so you know i think the lesson i learned there was like nothing's impossible yes. because actually it is Im almost impossible to get into that university yes. you know i was at the time i was waitering at a restaurant in camps bay to make some extra money and we get a lot of american tourists and I would be like, oh, yeah, you know, I just got into Yale. And basically they yeah. would almost collapse in their chair because they thought that was like the most ridiculous thing they've ever heard. Yeah. I didn't even realize like the significant significance of it at the time. Sure. And so, you know, at a young age, I sort of managed to tap into that entrepreneurial superpower, which is the ability to think that nothing's really impossible, you know, to dream that little bit extra and then to start just connecting a few dots to slowly see if it's possible and maybe it happens. And so, you know, people always tell me like, oh, you were so lucky to go there. And I was like, well, actually, yeah. you know, I had to have the thought, I had to go and do yes. the things, I had to take the test, I had to apply, I had to spend $75 that I barely had to do the application that yes. was a one in a million chances of getting in that most people wouldn't have spent the money on. But what creates um, that mindset? What created that mindset within you? It's a, it, the entrepreneurial mindset is a dreamer. It's, a, it's, it's a, a dreamer that is able to take a step to make that dream a reality. You know, yeah. like you have to first have a dream. You have to have a vision. Yeah. If you don't have that, you can't build anything. But I think you know? I'm taking it back to you. Like what created that ability to dream within you personally, if you can attribute it to certain factors? Um, I think that is, yeah, I mean, it's a very, you know, not everybody's an entrepreneur, you know, you get two types of people. You get people that do things that like to have that vision in front of them and then take the steps to make it happen. And then you get different types of people that don't see roadblocks that, um, you know, like push through the impossible, have courage, have persistence. And it's a, it is a, it is a mindset that some people have at a young age. Mm. It can be developed. Yeah. I think you can train entrepreneurs 
but the natural sort of entrepreneurs um, sort of have it when they're young, you know, people yeah. who I would say like certain types of people, like people who are very good at sports, mm -hmm. usually they have discipline and they can train hard and they spend a lot of time, you know, most people don't realize how much time they spend actually training, you know, and just like trying to achieve something. Sure. So um, I think, you know, I was, I loved sports when I was younger. I was very sort of, um, played squash for South Africa and I surfed and I played cricket and I think a lot of that sports mentality ability to know that if I worked hard enough I would be able to achieve something that mentality was developed when I was younger you know and then sort of maybe coming from a background where I didn't have too many limitations on um, from my parents on like what was possible they sort of gave me freedom to try things you know and I think that freedom of thought is quite important at a young age. Definitely. Now, how long were you at Yale University for? Uh, four years. Four years. Yeah. If you could summate those four years in one sentence, what would that sentence be? I can summate it in one word. Got it. Wild. Wild. In <laughs> yeah. what sense? Just like the American college system is a whole nother planet, basically. Like I was in a fraternity, so I did, it's like the movie. I, so I only see the movie, so yeah. I can't relate. Well, yeah. it's literally like the movie. So if you watched American Pie or any yes. of those movies, Skull and Bones, they have secret societies, they have, um, a, a, what I loved about it is it is the community. So there's so much to do outside of your academic classes you know right. there's so many facilities like they had libraries with some of the old the first ever edition of the bible or like um you know cinema in your dorm in your dorm and things like that you yeah. know so um you're also in a community with incredibly talented smart people from all around the world yeah. so you're challenged in different ways i know when i got there my first week you know coming from south africa I didn't have much of a global perception. Mm. I think South Africans are quite insulated from yeah. the world, you know? So I ended up meeting on my first day, someone from Peru, never even met someone from Peru before, yeah. Indian, French person, this, that. And slowly you start to, you know, through conversation with people, you start to, to grow your understanding of the world in a different way. Sure. Um, and then also noticing, you know, at a liberal arts college, people are motivated in different ways to learn so you know people will take things like art history yes or like you know architecture in ancient times and yes. i wasn't quite used to that yeah. way of thinking about education um so that was quite new for me and i really enjoyed that process of like taking courses that i wouldn't have otherwise taken because even though i was studying engineering i had to do a whole underlayer of like liberal arts got it and how many um, years would that underlayer have taken it was well it just happens at the same time, time. Okay. yeah so like you know here you would take you know 10 engineering classes a year there you'd take six and four liberal arts classes okay. right different kind of way of thinking about education which was quite uh, refreshing for me yes. even though everything i learned in engineering was like almost like irrelevant in yeah. the bigger picture and so when you say like you felt like it was missing something again i like to bring it back to simple a simple sentence what was your university education at yale missing you know what were you yearning for more of practical skills you know so if you walked into a company the day after you studied they're like cool can you do this mm. nothing i'd really learned was applicable in the technology age of today so yes, maybe if I was going to go build a bridge, you know, somewhere or a mine, I could apply those principles in some way, but that's not where the world is now. You know, okay. I don't want to go work on a bridge in a mine. I want to work for a tech startup or build a new startup or be involved in the modern economy. You Got know? it. So that's why there was a massive disconnect and there were no courses or degrees that were catering for this new economy got it so the the courses that you're offering as part of i experience are these building blocks that equip people practically yeah. for the modern world 100 percent. and then you're taking those courses and you're placing them in interesting places across the globe so not only are they gaining that perspective but also the perspective of the space that they're playing in yeah exactly you know like i think everyone has this desire to travel or to experience a new thing you know, back in the day, we used to buy material things to give us meaning. 
Um, that shifted when we got a smartphone yeah. and almost everything material was like in this phone. So now people are spending money on experiences. Yes. So Airbnb, all these yeah. things have grown so much because the, a human has evolved into looking to tap into their emotional side, into you know experiences that uplift them and they're willing to pay for it. So you know this is a market that's evolved and we believe in experiential learning to the highest degree um, and community building and human connection. So it's almost like the opposite of online learning. Yes. You know, our classes are 25 people. We have hundreds of people in each city, but the classes are small. They're super intense. I also believe a lot in focus. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that happens is in university is you have like four or five classes at the same time. So you're just trying to pass. Whereas with us, it's like you do one thing until you do it really well. Got it. And that way, um, because of that intensive focus, you know, whenever you're trying to learn something new, um, there's a barrier. There's a barrier to understanding. And actually, that barrier is very difficult to cross uh, for most people. Yes. So you have to almost force someone to believe that they can cross it by through repetition, through explaining from different perspectives, and then they kind of cross it. Yes. And then a world just opens up for them, you know. So when we teach coding, for example, People are very scared because they're like, I could not do something so technical. This is crazy. And I'm like, well, it's kind of like learning a language, yes. to be honest. There isn't actually any difference. You just got to learn it. Mm -hmm. But you've been programmed to think it's very difficult, but actually it's not. Great. So we, we force people into what I call, it's like a, it's called the hero's journey. Yes. Where they go through this like deep sort of like very difficult battle with themselves. And then they come out the other side like, 10x what they were before and yes. so we believe a lot in creating these experiences to take people way out of their comfort zone sure um, so often you'll see when people talk about our courses they'll say that was the most intensive empowering learning experience of my life got it you know? and that's really what we're going for. so intensive learning experience are the words that you're playing around that would like dictate your product development going forward yeah I think we'll always be like that because it's one of our value propositions mm. it's one of our unique selling points as a educational institution um, you know we want students to realize their full potential Got and it. as much of their potential as we can that's really in our mission statement is we create experiences that unlock our students potential or our community's potential Got it. so even within our staff you know we send our staff if you work at our experience you might go spend three months running the Lisbon program or in Tel Aviv, or we're just sending someone to Colombia now to research a new campus. And we're teaching our own staff about data science. We have coding tracks, we have design tracks, and you know, it really starts within your own company. Sure. Um, if you want, if you're selling a product uh, and you believe in that product and your staff believes in that product, I mean, not even the product, but the, the ethos of what you're doing yes and it permeates the culture in every way then it's easy for your customers to see and believe in it too Aaron the the next question that comes to my mind is you know I'm seeing that you're teaching practical skills within a changing space and therefore people are gaining perspective on you know both angles or many angles but yeah. I think my question for you is apart from these practical courses what skills or what it is skills actually do people need to future proof themselves going forward into this very yeah. very fast changing environment so it's a brilliant question about two years ago a big university in america university of virginia their dean called me because they wanted to know why so many of their students had done this program and i told them you know there's a massive skills crisis and we're teaching something that you're not and he wanted to come down and see what we were doing so he came with some associate deans there sort of interviewed us for three days on our education philosophy, on our ethos of learning. And they were super impressed and they wanted to build a partnership with us to accredit all of our courses. But they also wanted to bring in some of the traditional liberal arts thinking into what we were doing, sure. which was quite exciting for us because they realized that even though we were teaching hardcore practical skills, there is an element of this human critical thinking, analyzing from multiple perspectives, asking deep questions that we needed to be into our, um, into our courses. So we partnered with them. Our courses became accredited, which opened up, uh, basically turned us into a university overnight. Sure. And um, now we work quite closely with them to figure out what these human skills are. And ultimately, you know, it's that it's that ability to think creatively, mm. to problem solve, to um, 
to analyze from multiple perspectives and to, you know, to, comp to, to think about the complexity of things. And I'll give you an example, like in data science, we teach something like ethics, mm. you know, so we're teaching a skill, yeah. but we're also teaching you a, um, a liberal arts component of thinking about ethical ways of using data, yes. right? So we'll say, okay, watch this TED talk, read this article, and now write a paper on what you think. The data you're collecting to make this app you're building, like, what you know should it be public can what happens when people sign their data over to you like how do you think about this from that perspective and i think those kind of skills are what is going to make someone either like a worker in a factory or a solutionist of the future Got it. i mean that's really fascinating because it takes me back to you know how many guys playing with these products now have not had that yeah. liberal arts input and Lots. what the result of that is going to be going yeah. down the, the yeah. line you know but that's obviously a negative conversation we're not going to go yeah. there today and um, finally i mean you're playing in south africa you have chosen to come back mm. you were working on wall street as you say that's a very money-centric one-dimensional course of action that a human can take and you've come back to play in something that is a lot more purpose-driven Yes. You thus have perspective, which is a gift to the South African ecosystem. For the guys that are thinking of developing entrepreneur, you know, solutions, how would you tell them to approach coming up with the product? Mm. That is a good question. I personally think that in my experience, um, creating something that I wish I had is the easiest way to go because ultimately what I did was I, I thought of something that I wish I'd done in college, that I wish I'd, that had been there for me. So I was kind of solving my own problem and also noticing that other people had a similar problem and then tested the idea. So, you know, in the beginning we created a version of this program and ultimately sold it, but then it didn't sell so well. So we had to iterate on that and make a different version um, until we got it right. But coming up with the idea, you know, in my mind, maybe this is controversial, I don't know. I don't think you need to be creative in, uh, to have a creative idea to be an entrepreneur. I think you need to be a good entrepreneur. Like I could start making windows tomorrow yeah. and become the best window, make, window factory in this country if I wanted to, if I had the skill. And that's an entrepreneur, right? So, you know, even if you see a business that's working and you're like, I like that, you can start that business yourself. The market, if the markets are big enough yes. and, you know, your competitive edge will just be how well you build that business. Who do you bring into your team? How do you inspire people? How do you um, face, uh, how do you deal with challenging situations? Are you emotionally agile and intelligent? Um, can you build a business essentially? And this, you know, I think people get sort of put off when they think they don't have this brilliant idea. And sure. that's not what entrepreneurship is about to me. You know, every, there's hundreds of bread makers mm -hmm. that will do well. Yeah. You know, you don't yeah. have to be the best or yeah. the most unique idea in the world. Sure, I think like, I have absolutely loved speaking to you. I really hope that you come back because I'm sure that there's many topics yeah, that we are. can delve yeah. into. But I'm going to stop us here okay, today cool. just so the audience like, yeah, has yeah. a lot to think about. That's fine. But thank you so much. Pleasure. And hopefully we'll talk again. It's been yeah. a pleasure to finally meet you. Yeah. That, folks, was Aaron Fuchs, the founder of iExperience, an immersive learning platform, amongst many other things that are equipping students for the future. We're definitely going to be hearing from Erin again because that was a super, super insightful conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to see more interviews, come to more masterclasses and of course attend Heavy Chef's iconic entrepreneur learning experiences, then all you need to do is check out www.heavychef.com. And that is me, Kaylee Africa, yet again signing out of the Heavy Chef interview chair. Until next week, hamba <laughs>